Hi there. I hope you've had an absolutely wonderful Christmas. I can't believe it's the end of another year. And welcome to my 2023 review videos where I just have a little review of uh, what we got up to this year and I'll let you know my top five. Before we do, let me know what your highlight was of, uh, of 2023 of all the things that we've covered this year so leave me a comment below and see if that tallies up with uh, with my top five at the end of the video I don't know about you, but 2023 just feels like I've had my finger stuck on the sky remote at fast forward times 30. It's gone so quickly. It's been a year of highs, um, lows, some massive lows. you see when you hang around tunnel portals isn't it so you might know you might not know depends if you were watching the channel at that time but i spent the majority of the summer laid up with uh, a, a double broken leg and a, an acl injury so not a great start uh, to the summer um so I, I wasn't really doing much around may june july uh, and then a few months i couldn't really do my railway walks uh, scramble around so i had to diversify so visited quite a few places that I wanted to uh, to visit. We started filming around a few heritage railways. Which ones have we done? Day out at Barrow Hill, Peak Rail, that was a great day. Lincolnshire Walls Railway. My award for best heritage railway that I visited this year, I think it has to be the Churnet Valley Railway. Well, the railway was great. Uh, and that American um, steam locomotive, the power of it, wow. I think it took a, I think it took a few days for the eardrums to work to return back to normal. So I think I'll visit a few more heritage railways next summer as well. What have you been licking this morning? So what else have we done this year? Um, I was looking through the videos. Wow, what some some great memories that the um, we were privileged enough to go and visit that the uh, the rock the place the uh, the royal observer corps um with uh, with stephen and leo back in august i think it was that was a fantastic experience being shown around the site by jed um the volunteer who, who kind of runs and looks after the uh, the old shelter couple more things to mention before we get on to the top five uh, and the award for the grimmest weather grimmest day out um, we've had the recent one I did with John, we filmed the Woodhead line, um, but that was just wet. Um, back in January I visited, up in, uh, up in Cumbria, I was at Centre Parks, so I nipped out and did a uh, walk up to, from Kirk Stephen to Smardale Gill Viaduct, and that was the weather that day, wow. And it was the wind, I think, that made it worse. It is a bit extreme today though. But a smart Dale Gill viaduct. I'm struggling to hold on to the camera, it's that windy. You know, you visit these locations in, in January time, what do you expect? But it was it was still a absolutely fantastic day out. Some really, really great memories uh, making that video. The award for the most, uh, what's the word, the grimmest, probably at least enjoyable explorers of 2023. Um, could have been any number of the ones on uh, the Dern Valley Railway series that I did uh, in the first half of the year. I'm not saying it wasn't interesting, there were some fantastic um, history involved in that series. Some absolutely fantastic parts of the Dern Valley Railway that's well worth filming, documenting, visiting. I think it was more the nature of the summer, the places I had to go. Okay, we've moved up to the next section. Now, another, well, each section grimmer than the last. Fly tipping. Some of those, I mean, I, where is it? I parked up in the lay-by and had a walk. I can't remember the names of the location now. 
just north of uh, New New Houghton. Um, oh, some of the fly tipping in that lay by and on the side of the old railway sidings. Oh, it was just awful. Just, just flashing you some things I'm, as I walk past today. Can you jump over? Come on, it's just a gap. Come on, jump. Good boy. So that's the dirty weather and the dirty places. That's the negative ones out of the way. Um, restoration. So, best restoration stuff this year. I went up to the Yorkshire Walls Railway, didn't I? In August, I think it was. Um, great piece of work that they're doing there. Really look forward to visiting again in the future and seeing, seeing how they're getting on. I've um, been seeing on Facebook, they are making good progress with the old Sprotra signal box as well. Fantastic work guys. But for me, on a personal level, I have to give the award for the best restoration stuff that I've covered this year, 2023, to the guys at Clown, Clown Local History Society. Oh no, it doesn't look like anyone's here this morning. It is a Tuesday morning, but it is Christmas week. I was gonna say, speak of the devils, and then give them a little surprise. But it's been an absolute privilege to uh, to get access to these guys and watch them um, watch them up close and follow the progress that they've made over the course of the year. I've had such a great response to the videos that I've put out. I think I've done seven or eight in total. It's not in my top five because um, I think it deserves its own special mention, but this is probably the highlight of 2023 for me, watching this develop. Never mind, we'll catch up with the Clown Local History Society in the new year, I suppose. You need a reminder just of the great work they've done. And I know I've shown this so many times, but let's have a look at these before and after shots of that site we've just been stood at. Here's more of their good work down in Clown. I was going to have a sit down here, but the seat's a bit wet, but never mind. My bum will soon dry, won't it? Right, I think that's everything else I wanted to mention before my top five. So let's start the countdown in at number five. We've got the trimmings up. So in at number five, one I've already mentioned, it topped my dirtiest, worst weather day video uh, and that was my trip to Smar Dale Gill Viaduct. So I was driving down the M6 um, and I think around Shap area you know the really really exposed bit on the top. At that point I could have no one would have blamed me if uh, I would have turned back and gone back. Um, you could barely see 10 yards in front the weather was that bad the rain the wind wow uh, i got out of the car at kirby stephen and um, went and had a look around at the um the railway the heritage railway there and it did get a bit better i think i had a little bit of a window um fantastic viaduct loved seeing the lime kilns and the, the scenery in general just walking through those gorges was fantastic well worth a visit there if you're in the area. In at number four, me and John took a trip to um, the other side of the Pennines. We did a day of filming. We did three videos in that series. We did. We started off at the old Dinting Shed. Had a look around the Dinting, some of the old station buildings, and the Dinting Railway Centre so many childhood memories uh, were fetched back from that visit um, and then we moved on we had a look at the godly turntable but it was built in the 1930s and that sign's just been saying it was built for um with electrification in mind and then finally the majority of the day was spent up spent looking around the old Mottram yard, the old Marshalling yard, exchange sidings, etc. I think it's the, the day out, the collection of videos and things we saw that day that puts it in my top five. It was just a great, a great day out. Nice weather as well for the time of year. I love this cutting, I really do. You just imagine the sound of the trains 
coming here given that it's quite it's quite a, an incline as well in both directions and down to Creswell or up from Creswell should I say so in at number three again rather than an individual video a collection of videos that I filmed and that's Chesterfield Lost Railways three videos that I put out over the course of the summer I think that day out in Chesterfield it was the first time I kind of been out on my own anywhere um, and I think it's safe to say I did overdo it that day I thought I'll just have a quick wander around Chesterfield Town Centre I think I ended up walking about three miles that day in total around Chesterfield I think I'd only been off my crutches uh, about 10 days or something like that and I just jumped on the bus went down so yeah again another collective day out really and I filmed all the stuff around the Great Central and a good walk around um, then I had a look at the LDECR um, but then I, we had another day out about a month later me and Phil went and had a look at the Brampton branch something which there's not too much of uh, left behind it took a bit of a imagination but I love those doing those videos where there's a bit of detective work involved you kind of you've got the old maps you've got occasionally got a collection of old photos and you're trying to piece it all together with what's there now yeah great fun see the wooden sleepers it's in amongst the grass there look I think if them trees weren't there that'd be a reasonable shot of a track bed wouldn't it yeah straight through there you see the edge of the platform well actually it's still coming alongside of us here isn't it look well what we're assuming to be a platform so it's all this broken glass yeah but somebody walked that walk here in 2050 and this might not be it at all then you've got to remember that every generation there's changes isn't they yeah so we've, they might be gagging for something like what we've just seen there in, in 30 years and i've not finished that series um i've been out filming uh, a couple more videos to go with that so keep your eyes peeled for those Top two, it's getting serious now, isn't it? So I'm gonna put at number two. Uh, it's a series we're still in the process of filming right now, and I think it's gonna be going um, probably until this time next year with the amount of stuff there still is to look at. And that's the Cromford and High Peak Railway series. Me and Phil started filming that back in August time. We did that first day of filming where we filmed four episodes between um, the original High Peak Junction off the, off the main railway line up to Middleton Top. Oh, I can't believe it's the end of the climbing for today. Middleton Top. Kill. Might be wind. And the icing on the cake was just being able to see the Middleton um, engine working that day. If you've been to, uh, you've just been to see the pump house, that costs £400 a day in coal. This costs 30 cents an hour in the There we go. If you've watched carefully, you can see the wagon just coming up the incline. <laughs> To get your finger trapped would you and we've had a couple of subsequent uh, trips to do some filming there as well the foggy day that we did around Hopton and then we did Longcliffe uh, and Minninglow last time we went out got the stuff out I know there's some tubs up there innit? but they usually just tipped them in didn't they it's yeah full size stuff but and those limestone bankings wow that line just it just absolutely mesmerizes me the amount of history on it alone but some of the things that are left um I, yeah i can't wait to carry on doing that and see what else we uh, we on earth so straight from a cutting straight onto an embankment and i think this no we're not going down there gordo You're not pulling me down there come on this is where they uh, pulled some of those sleepers um from the old the station restoration in clown uh, down the side of here blue brick bridge abutments this is the old lancashire derbyshire and east coast railway baton branch it just passed it over the top of us now or what would have once passed over the top of us so 
So without further ado, number one, what's been my favorite video experience of 2023. And again, it was another series of six videos that were filmed. And this was the Great Central Railway Lost Leicestershire series. This collection of videos was why I got into doing this type of thing. So we started that day, I think it was, so that was an early start that day. I think we started filming it around 8 a.m. from the site of the old Lutterworth station. We made our way various locations. Um, that tunnel, Dun Dunton Bassett Tunnel, um, Whetstone Viaduct, the bridge over the M1, um, and we finished um, at the Great Central Railway at Leicester North Station. So the highlight of that trip for me was undoubtedly having a look around all the old Great Central Railway stuff in Leicester City Centre, the old Leicester Central Station, those viaducts, wow, what a sight that must have been when it was still open. And the amount of people um, that have contacted me saying, oh, you missed this, you missed that, you didn't include this. We, we could have made a video for weeks. We could have done so many episodes on the amount of stuff that there is still left lying around. And if you enjoyed that one, me and Jim are off to do some more great central filming down that way um, in the new year. So keep your eyes peeled from that. I've been looking forward to that since we started talking about it earlier this year. So let me know if you agree or disagree or have another viewpoint on top five. I'd love to know what everybody's top five is because everybody's top five is going to be different. It's probably a good time to mention as well. I launched my channel memberships um, for Wobbly Runner uh, YouTube channel a couple of weeks ago. So thanks to everybody that's, uh, that's signed up so far. I can't remember how much they are now, but I think from, from 2.99, um, it's a great way of supporting me, helping me carry on, make things, because it's not cheap. Um, if you knew the amount of money I'd spent on new equipment this year, you know, it's, it's four figure sums. And that's before we've even taken into account traveling to places, you know, things like that. So, you know, everything that I do get back from, from my YouTube channel, um, like from, from the annoying adverts YouTube put on there, I do in, reinvest back into the channel anyway. It just doesn't go into my back pocket. So I'm already looking forward to 2024. I've got a lot of things in the pipeline, um, but what else have we got on the horizon? I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing some action uh, on the Chesterfield Canal restoration. Um, hopefully 2024 we'll start to see some movement on that Transpennine Trail Bridge, fingers crossed. Obviously we'll uh, follow the progress on how the uh, carry on down at Clown. Got the High Peak Trail series. Um, quite a few plans in the pipeline um, for carrying on with that. I'm having to read them from my phone because I I'll miss something out. Back to Wales. Mm, put a few ghosts to rest there. All the stuff I had planned last year I didn't get a chance to do so um, fingers crossed we'll um, have a better run at it this year I won't come home in an ambulance this time got more woodhead videos um, in the pipeline as well um, and I'm hoping to get out and do some of the sections around Barnsley like the Wersbury Incline um, all that area as well as making our way over the top woodhead tunnel and uh, looking at some more things on the other side as well. So that's a wrap for 2023. All that's left to do is just thank everybody who's contributed to my channel this year. And that includes anybody who's given me information, far too many to mention here. Um, anyone who's given me permission to use their photographs, they make such a difference. But a big thanks to, uh, to those that have appeared in my videos this year. I've had to make a list, quite a list this year. I did miss Paul off last year, so I thought I'm writing them down. So, in no particular order, we've got Jim, Phil, John, Stephen, and little Leo, uh, Paul, forgetting Paul this year, uh, Renton, Adam, and all the guys at Clown History Society, um, and, uh, and finally, Julian up at the Yorkshire Wolves. Special thanks, not that they'll be watching uh, this video, but a uh, special thanks um, to the Barmouth Coast Guard and the uh, guys from the ambulance station at Barmouth as well. Um, who knows where I'd be without you guys, so cheers. Probably washed out to sea by now. 
So all that's left for me to say is Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you have a fantastic New Year's Eve, whatever you're doing. I'll probably be in bed for half past ten. That's how things seem to go this way. So cheerio and we'll see you all in 2024.